So on 24 July 2012, I was driving in town. Now, I was driving in Osu. I had uh, I'd gone to see Kojo Bonsu, those of you who know him. And uh, Kojo Bonsu's office is uh, somewhere in the Osu, between Kingdom and that kind of thing. He wasn't in the office, but he was expecting me. I showed up in his office around 2 o'clock. He wasn't in the office. And his secretary said that he had just gone to the castle. And I tried to call him. He didn't pick up. So I was driving away. And then I tuned into Joy FM and I had the very bad news. Later on, a few years later, I met uh, CTFM's Richard Sky, who told me that I had done a broadcast in which I had said that Joy FM had broken the story. Uh, but in fact, he broke the story on CTFM, and I believe him. Uh, so on this occasion, I have to correct that. That the story was broken by CTFM's Richard Sky. But I first heard it from Jifa Bampo's uh, shaking and, and teary voice. Uh, is it teary eyes or teary voice? Okay, teary eyes, but I couldn't see her. So teary voice, because I could hear her on radio. And she was in tears and was talking about Professor Mills hadn't uh, eventually, well, eventually is the word? Well, maybe because he was ill for a while. Professor Mills had passed, okay. And, um, and then I quickly called my people to change the program for the day. And we were gracious that the School of Performing Arts delivered to us their Professor Yerua, who incidentally has also uh, eventually passed to eternal glory. And he was in our studio. He brought his attentive band and gave us a beautiful introduction to the program. Nana Sase was then discovered that day on our show because I called him to render a poem. And after Nana Sase had spoken, the funeral committee called him and he was part of the Mills burial service. Nana Sase has always been our friend since then. Okay, so that's what happened. And then funeral announcements were made about how the Professor Mills burial was going to be conducted. So the Professor Mills burial was then conducted beautifully, attended by the U.S. Secretary of State, as she then was Hillary Clinton, and led by, of course, the new president, John Dramani Mahama. Then they said they were going to bury Professor Mills, and the, the issue about where to bury Professor Mills came up, whether it's going to be the Osu Military Castle, uh, Osu Military Cemetery, or whether it was going to be Otuam in his village, where I had been as part of my work for 2000 elections when Professor Mills was a candidate. I went to Otuam with a team from Joy FM to sort of assess Professor Mills' place, uh, his hometown, and how they were treating his, their, their son on the ballot paper. So the people of Otuam wanted the, the burial over there, but this was a really huge funeral. This is the first time a president had passed uh, whilst he was still president. So they lost the battle and they were convinced to allow the event to occur in Accra. So the event occurred at the forecourt of the uh, state house, led by President Mahama. And Ghanaians were told that Asunjue Park was going to be uh, the place that Professor Mills would be laid. And that Asunjue Park was being proposed by the funeral committee to be the place where we will lay down future heads of state who passed, whether they passed in office or whether they passed after. So uh, other graves were dug to signify uh, something. A library was supposed to be constructed at Asunjue Park as well to make it like a national monument. It's not actually too far from the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. So it kind of made a lot of sense to all of us young people that we go to America and we know that uh, there's a uh, there's graveyard for Reagan and all of that. You can look at it. And we didn't have that in Ghana, apart from the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. And so Dr. Liman had been buried in the Guelu in the, in the Upper East region. And he had been buried amidst a lot of uh, discontent from his family, between his family and the government of the day. So that was not real history that we had. Professor Mills was going to give us the continuation of a history of our, our former heads of state. So that was quite appreciated. And then Asumjee Park was constructed. Professor Mills passed, John Mahama became president, and in 2013, 2014. I'm going to show you this video from TV3, okay? Where, apart from the Asir Nketia video that I played to you, in which Asir Nketia was complaining that Asumjee Park had been run down, and he was hoping that President Akufado will do something about it. That's really where I'm coming to, and I'm totally shocked about why Asumjee Park and Professor Mills' 10th anniversary is becoming controversial. I don't even get it, but we will get there. Okay, so the story continues that... Uh, uh, after Professor Mills was buried there, President Mahama is president. The NDC is still in power. Uh, John Sinasir Dunkatia is still the general secretary of the NDC that is in power. Mr. Potofi, who was chairman at the time Professor Mills died, hands over to Kobunai J, who becomes the chairman of the party, is still really the same actors. M many ministers had not changed. Still really the same people in office. Uh, Kofito Tobi Kwachi and others who led the funeral conversation somehow are still kind of in place. You know, and not much has changed. Haruna Idris is still a minister. But many ministers are still ministers. Some have given way to others, but it is still the same NDC administration. It beats one's imagination why TV3 will be able to put a story like that 
at Asumjie Park when the NDC was in power. In Ghana, we'll normally hear these things happen. When one government goes, another government comes, they will abandon their projects, etc. But this was the same government. It was not just the same government. This was their hero. This was the NDC's hero, Professor Mills, who had delivered the NDC out of opposition after two terms. And, and this was a, a famous professor, well-respected by many people. He was a political opponent of the MPP, so of course they used to have their banter here and there. But for the NDC that was in power, this was their hero. Watch this story from TV3, captured at the time President Mahama was president, on the situation and the state of Asumjie Park. When President Mahama is president, Park we see a Misata, one of the favorite people of Pro uh, Professor Mills, is vice president. Johnson Asedun Katia is general secretary of the NDC. He doesn't remember to remind Don John Mahama, to remind Park we see Misata, that we have not done anything about Asumjie Park. That Asumjie Park, now yeah, yeah, my Professor Mills, no, or say. Nobody says that in four years. I can't believe this. Nobody. All the people who benefited from Professor Mills' sacrifice, his heroism, his ability to stay on, on course to contest three elections, all the people who became ministers and state officials as a result of Professor Mills' sacrifice, it did not occur to anyone. In the four years of John Muhammad's administration, they had over 60 cabinet meetings. Nobody in the cabinet was able to remind President Muhammad that, hey, Asumjie Park is, is, is going down. What are we doing about it? That's where Professor Mills' mortal remains lay. Nobody said that in four years. Okay, here's TV3's reports. The death of President John Evans Atta Mills in 2012 came as a shock to the whole Ghana and even beyond. A state decision was taken to use portions of the Geese Park close to the Osu Castle as a burial ground for sitting and former presidents who may pass on. It was named Asumjie Park. A library, a mausoleum, a fish pond and a mini zoo were to be put up. Information gathered by TV3 indicates one Don Arthur was awarded the contract to design and build the Asunjue Park, but we were unable to reach him. Construction of the library and mausoleum, which began at the time, have remained uncompleted till now. Portions of the place is also yet to be walled. Meanwhile, the fish pond and the mini zoo are functioning. The NDC had been in power for four and a half years. By the time he was, that's four and a half years after Professor Mills had been buried. The MPP had been in power for two and a half years at the time he spoke. Johnson Asedun Katia also talked about the same thing, that he thinks that something must happen to the Asumjie Park. And Johnson Asedun Katia and Kokoa Nido are both speaking in the NPP era, isn't it? So the question still remains. Can somebody answer that question? The NDC were in power four and a half years. How much does it cost to do Asumjie Park? All sorts of things were done. A rich hospital was built. The Kotoka Airport terminal was begun. Roads were done. Circle was done. How much does it cost to fix Asumjie Park? Was it because somebody didn't like somebody at Atamos Institute? Was it because somebody was annoying? But if somebody's annoying you, is that how you treat the, uh, the death place of your leader? I mean, how? I, I don't get it. But this is what happened. And I mean, when I watched the video on Metro TV on Sunday, and I saw them wearing a Tamil's cloth and they were happy to go, I said, what? God bless E.T. Mensah and Alhaji Baba Kamara, the National Security Advisor to President Mahama. I think that this was, to say the least, very shameful. I, you, you are in power for four and a half years. You do absolutely nothing about Asum Park. You allow it to rot. Actually, you destroy it. I'm, I'm still trying to understand. So no, but no member of parliament, NDC had a majority of 100 and something. No member of parliament, one day, one minute, five minutes, 30 seconds, could remember that, hey, what is happening to, is it ingratitude or what kind of character is that? Could say, ah, what is happening to, how many years did we continue to have a conversation about Nkrumah's birthplace? So that Fly Lieutenant Rollins moved the Nkrumah's birthplace from Nkrumah to the Memorial Park. Today it's being reconstructed. The government that Professor Mills put in place, that he died upon, they buried him at Asumje Park. See, I said Dunkata in the video saying that, oh, this is very bad. It's because we did the rush and we, he's talking when Akufado is president too. 
He had been there four and a half years as general secretary. He was general secretary before Professor Mills died. I'm sure Professor Mills had promoted him to be general secretary. He was general secretary before Professor Mills died. He was general secretary for the four. You see what I say about, I don't even know how to say it. When I say the baby, they just want the baby dead. Sometimes people come and cry. You, you see what I've been saying. This is, and, and they were, I mean, I, I don't know whether they think Ghanaians will not read through it. Ghanaians will not ask the questions. Ah, but you people, you didn't do the thing. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I was really monitoring social media. And I saw a lot of young people saying that, oh, I'm happy that Hassan Park has been done. I can take my friends there. When my friends come from America, I can take them there. But that's beautiful. That's nonpartisan. That's not politics. It's just common sense. That you fix Asunjie Park, whether you like him, you like Kokwa Nidoho, you don't like Kokwa Nidoho, that's immaterial. You think MPP like Kokwa Nidoho? Was he not the same person who was calling for kuditas? You think they like him? No, they don't. But when President Akufado saw the letter, as a statesman who doesn't want the baby dead, he looked at it and said, ah, Atamos Institute says we should renovate Asunjie Park. I'm sure Akufado has never even been there. So he probably said, I think this is something we should have a look at. But how much does it cost? How much? So, Koko Anidoho is not the most likable person for the MPP. But he wrote a letter to, and I'm sure when Koko himself was writing the letter, he was thinking that they would look at it and they would ignore it. But they didn't ignore it. The president, it caught the president's attention. He said, ah, Professor Mills, Fifi Mills, the guy I used to play football with, my political opponent. I think that we should do something about it. So, let's have a look. And then they have a look. They do something about it. And this is the result. I mean, people come at 12.30 and, you know, <laughs> yeah, we have come. We are coming to do Professor Mills. Really? Four and a half years of neglect of your leader. Four and a half years. Total and absolute neglect of your leader. Cabinet didn't remember. President didn't remember. Vice president didn't remember. Parliamentarians didn't remember. The speaker didn't remember. DCEs didn't remember. All of these humongous appointees of the executive coming out of the loins of the learned professor could not remember that the man's death place is horrendous. Nobody remembered. Not one year, not two years, not three years. Four and a half years of rulership of the republic that Professor Mills had bequeathed unto you. What? That's what happened. That is what happened. And that's the truth of the matter. How they were so encouraged to show up at a place they had neglected to come and celebrate the 10th anniversary of Professor Mills. It is on Sunday that I understood the maxim, dead men don't speak. Because if dead men could speak and they had a cane, oh, Jesus Christ, what would have happened at Asunjie Park on Sunday? We would have been running helter skelter. Dead men truly don't speak. Really? I mean, how? Look at even historical, even if you don't, historical, let's go historical. Joseph of Arimathea, okay? The disciples of Jesus, the circumstances under which Jesus died. At the time Jesus died, they were afraid. But they said, let us go and look at the tomb where they buried our leader. Mary said, let us go and embalm him so that his body will be clean. Because we don't know how these Romans manage his body. Because Jesus was our leader. And in the circumstances of their approaching the place, they were under peril. Because the Roman soldiers will actually kill you. Because the Roman soldiers were guarding the tomb. So that, as the Bible records, the disciples do not come and steal his body away. And come and say that he resurrected. So uh, uh, Pontius Pilate had deployed a, a platoon at the tomb of Jesus Christ. And the Mary and, uh, and, uh, and her sister and the disciples, they were going to the tomb at peril. They knew what could happen to them. So they went at dawn so that they may not be seen. To do what? To embalm the, the Jesus Christ. They didn't even know that he was going to resurrect. They didn't know. They had heard him say it, but they didn't believe that he would die in the way he died. And he died. They didn't know he was going to resurrect. They showed up at the tomb and they met an angel. And he said, who have you come to seek? He said, we have come to embalm Jesus. He said, no, the Jesus that you seek is not here. He is among the living. That is 2,000 years ago, the behavior of noble men and women. The behavior of noble men and women. The behavior of moral men and women. 
Now you bury Professor Mills. Beautiful ceremony. Nice burial ceremony. Befitting of a former president. You leave him at Asumjie Park. And you leave Asumjie Park to be eaten by rodents and ants and all of that. And you come 10 years later. Okay, let me just show you the, um, the event. Oh, we're now down 20 minutes already. I'm sorry about that. Let me show you the event on how Good Evening Ghana captured the day on which Mills died. Here it is. received a statement, very brief a statement from the president's chief of staff saying this was an untimely and sudden death that John Utter Mills at the age of 68 fell ill and died just a few hours after being admitted at number 37 military hospital in Ghana. We expect him to get... John Dramani Mahama is Africa's newest leader. He was sworn in just hours after the announcement of the death of his predecessor, Ghanaian President John Atta Mills. The presidential office said he died in hospital in the capital Accra, but provided no other details. And it is with a very heavy heart that we present tonight's edition of Good Evening Ghana. I'm sure that you already are well aware of the very, very terrible news that has engulfed our country. Earlier this afternoon, it was reported on radio and on Metro TV news that uh, President John Evans Sata Mills had died after a short illness at a 37 military hospital. Tonight, our show is dedicated to pay in tribute to the learned professor, former vice president of our country, and also now, indeed, a former president of Ghana. That was 10 years ago, wasn't it? So, that's the story. Okay, so what happened on Sunday and why is this ridiculous? Let's go through these photographs. So, the first set of photographs I'll show you is the official government event. The second set of photographs I'll show you is the NDC event. And that's why we say that the uh, destroyer is attacking the builder. It, it shows, it, it reflects the state of Ghanaian politics. What happened on Sunday truly reflects the state of Ghanaian politics, where politics is no longer about truth. Politics is no longer about the nation. Politics is just about, I want to come to power. That's what Ghanaian politics have become now, about I just want to come to power. I don't care. I don't care about the baby. Kill him. Let's share it. That's all. That's all politics has become today. The story of Sunday really shows and reflects what Ghanaian politics have become or what some people want Ghanaian politics to become. They want the politics to just be about them and coming to power. Nothing else. Okay. So here is the first event. This is the bus that was done for Professor Mills, unveiled by His Excellency the President and Samuel Kokwa Nido. Uh, let's move on. So this is the uh, uh, Begone Unbelief. This is the place that was renovated. You saw the TV3 story. This is it. Uh, so this is the arrival of the President, Nana Kufado in black suit, Dr. Al-Hadi Baumia. God bless you, team. Yes, I'll say that again, uh, who was one of the key people of Professor Mills. If you go and look at the funeral videos, you see it, team, yes, everywhere. Uh, and this is the team arriving at the ceremony that was boycotted by the National Democratic Congress, the largest opposition party, the party of Professor Mills, completely boycotted the event. Okay, why did they boycott the event? Up till now, they have not been able to say why they boycotted the event. They boycotted the event because they didn't do Asumjie. Is it, was it embarrassment? Were they hiding the embarrassment? Maybe, I don't know. But what is embarrassing? Political, the nature of political operation is that you win some and you lose some. You score on goals and you score good goals. You lose one, it's okay. It's a loss for the NDC, clearly. But it doesn't mean anything. MPP also have losses. So in politics, you can lose, you can win. I would have thought that President Muhammad's advisors, and I believe that President Muhammad's advisors really did not give him good advice on Sunday. His advisors would have encouraged him to attend the event. Yes, he could have attended the event. He was built to speak at the event. And in his speech, he could have talked about President Akufuado and how you were opposed to Professor Mills and how today you have come to acknowledge that Professor Mills is a good president. You can even go a bit more political and talk about the current economic situation and what Professor Mills would have said about it. 
You can even go further more political and say a few things. And then at the end of your speech, you can say that, Mr. President, I believe that we have your permission as the NDC to come back here and celebrate Professor Mills properly. The president would have nodded. People would have laughed. Everybody would have clapped. And that's it. So those advisors who told President Muhammad that don't attend the event, they've done him more harm than good. Don't attend the event because of what? When Adekoka was introduced on Metro, interviewed on Metro TV, he was struggling to explain. And he kept saying, I stand to be corrected. The invitation didn't go to President Muhammad, but I stand to be corrected, whatever that meant. What is the single reason why the NDC did not attend the event? The NDC attends Independence Day event. The NDC attends a sessional address event. The NDC attends all events. This particular one concerning the NDC more than any other political party. The NDC refused to attend the event. But why? Do they have a reason they should tell us? Were they hiding an embarrassment? Every political party gets embarrassed. MPP said, we will not go to IMF. Eventually they went. It's embarrassing, isn't it? But Ophirata was in parliament yesterday and he stood up to it. So that's you get embarrassed in politics. You don't do something you're opening. That's it's, going, it's not going to stop now. It's going to continue forever. I'll show you a video of Boris Johnson after this where he's acknowledging that he's leaving power. So political embarrassment is okay. There's no problem with that unless you want the baby killed. But if you're about the country, there's nothing wrong with accepting a political embarrassment and we move on. So President Mohammed's advisor should have advised him to attend the event. And in his speech, he could have said anything he wants to say. This is a day for Professor Mills and therefore a day for the NDC. So you remember when Akufado was reading his speech, he said that in 2012, he competed with Professor Mills. Uh, in 2008, he competed with Professor Mills. And Professor Mills, he said he won the first round. What many people say was unnecessary. That's how he put it, something like that. And he laughed, and the audience laughed. And that Professor Mills won the second and the third round, which was the better victory. That's how we play politics, because it's about the nation. It's about the future of the nation. It's not about us. It's not about we coming to power. We have to come to power. It's not that. It is about the nation. And people who do that, I hope they don't come to power. Whether they are NDC, CPP, WCY, any group of people who do power for power's sake should not come to power. And the young Ghanaians should be listening. People who do, I want power for they should not be allowed to come to power. What kind of behavior is this? So the NDC did not attend. Okay, let's go on. This is President Akufado making obeisance uh, to the wreath uh, for that was laid on behalf of the government and people of Ghana. This was Koku Anido, who's still feeling the pain, I guess, after 10 whole years. But I think his, his tears here was gratifying that eventually Asumje Park had been fixed. That was more important. And this is the tree planting exercise with uh, Nana Akufado planting the tree. Koku, Nana Akufado and Koku Anido, who don't see eye to eye. They don't. Koko Ajido, who was talking about a coup d'etat the other day, he was talking about it. He was arrested by the police. He was visited by John Mahama. But President Akufado is doing this in the national interest. It's not so much for Koko Ajido or for the NDC. It is about a former president and the way in which we raise children in this country so that they can understand monuments, they can understand legacy, they can understand culture. That's how we build a society. We will always have politics and we will always do politics. But it's not about politics for politics' sake. That must sink down into some people's heads tonight. It's not politics for politics' sake. Truly, dead men don't speak. And dead men don't have cane. Dead men don't have belt. And dead men don't speak. Look at Asumje Park. Have a look at it. Look at Asumjue Park today. It actually even looks more beautiful on the, than, than on the day that Professor Mills was buried. This is Asumjue Park today. Now we come to the other events. This is President Mahama and the NDC. Uh, they had a beautiful cloth representing Professor Mills' uh, cloth that was used. for. The, but they could have put on the cloth and joined the event because President Mahama was built to speak. They said they would not attend the event. So they would come to the event at 12. They created program difficulties for Metro TV. And Metro TV was the only station that actually um, was covering it live on Sunday. And they created program difficulties for us. I had been on the phone with my people, my programs manager and all that, to determine what we do. In fact, on Sunday, we had a live program at 3 o'clock. We had to change the live program because we needed to pick President Mohammed's speech. They had created a problem for us in programming. But we know that we are doing a national service. So we had to suspend our live uh, paid-for program and have the NDC event aired because we had aired the earlier one. We didn't know that we were going to have two events that day. So we're going to start from 10 o'clock all the way to about 4 o'clock on one particular event. But that's what happened. Then we gave it to our viewers. And I'm sure some of you watched the event on Metro TV. Now, that's President Mahama here. And this is uh, Professor Mills' sister, 
uh, some of the family, the clergy, President Mahama speaking, uh, at the Asumjie Park. This is some local <laughs> swamp awful. Did they forget that they could have done this four years, four in four and a half years they were in power? Did they forget? No mention of it was made. I was listening to all their speeches. No mention of it was made. No mention of the embarrassment. Nothing. They just came there and, and then your opponents have done the Asunjay Park and you come there. They didn't say anything about it. Samuel of Pofo, I believe that is the party's uh, wreath with Johnson Asir Nukatia supporting him. Uh, Dr. Otokuno over there, one of my good friends. Uh, and then I believe this is uh, Adekoka. Uh, who is also there for the Ruth Lane ceremony. So uh, for young people, we need to examine our politicians very, very closely and understand what their motive is for doing the things they do. Let's judge their motive and based on that, decide to elect them or not. It's, it's a big story because politics hands over the power to a certain group of people. And I will not go further than that because we've done almost about 35 minutes now. <laughs>